In 1961, UMass head coach Matt Zunick brought in a former player of his from Boston University to become an assistant, 28-year-old Boston native Jack Lehman. Five years later, after then-coach Johnny Orr's sudden resignation, athletic director Warren McGurk promoted the little-known Lehman to head coach. He was a, a guy that came out of, of BU where, where he played, and, uh, and he had no big prior record as a coach. He came to UMass as a pretty young guy. It didn't take long for the new coach to turn the Redmen into a Yankee Conference powerhouse. After compiling a losing record in his first year, Lehman's strong leadership and legendary attention to detail helped lead UMass to a first place conference finish in eight of the next nine seasons. Uh, coach Lehman was, a, was a, a patterned offense and despite how good you were or how good you thought you were, your job was to play the role. There was a fast break and you didn't hit the open man in practice, you stopped the practice and he'd introduce you to the person and say, that, that's, that's Johnny, that's he's your teammate, he was ahead of you, you passed the ball. Jack was a, a pretty intense guy, I think everyone recognizes that. Um, very uh, focused on the details, a no-nonsense kind of guy. Jack Lehman, he's such a passionate guy and he loved to coach and he loved to teach. Coach Lehman developed a pipeline between the talent-rich Long Island area and Amherst, one that would land UMass standout players like Julius Irving, Al Skinner, and Rick Pitino. He had Peter Broker was an outstanding assistant coach. Peter knew the New Jersey, New York area very well. Uh, he had Ray Wilson on his staff, who had been Ju Julius Irving's coach. Ray came a little later. Uh, and they were able to do some good recruiting and, and get good players to come in. UMass presented something very unique and that was the relationship between Jack Lehman and Ray Wilson, who was my high school coach. And they had attended BU together, and they were friends. And UMass offered me a personal experience that I wouldn't have gotten elsewhere because of their relationship, and I think that was, that was really the, the, um, the driving influence for deciding to go there. With all the great talent aboard, Lehman's teams made the NIT six times in the first eight years of the 1970s. As demanding as he was on the court, the coach had a personal side that made him a friend and mentor to many. We could have honest, open discussions about not only basketball, but about life and, and his feelings, and really became a friend of mine after my college career. And that's probably what I embraced the most, is the relationship that we sustained. He was very much a father figure. My father died when I was very young, so it was important to have you know, a male uh, figure outside of my home, and then from 18 to 21, it was principally Jack. When I was a junior, uh, my dad passed away uh, during the basketball season. You know, relatives came up and picked me up and brought me home. At the wake, Coach Lehman and the basketball team showed up. That's basically the type of guy Coach Lehman was. I remember meeting with Boyden one day and, and I introduced myself. And Of course, I thought I was meeting you know, Red Auerbach because, you know, because he was the coach. And I told him I was from Central Square in Cairns. Oh, Steve Buckley, I'm Bob. And he had that high school. Oh, come on in and sit down. How are you doing? That was great. And, you know, and I felt like I was with a celebrity. It was the coolest thing in the world. With a lack of institutional and financial support preventing the Minutemen from being competitive in the newly formed Eastern 8 Conference, Lehman resigned in 1979 after 13 seasons as head coach. His 217 career victories are still the most for any coach in program history. He remained involved with UMass basketball for much of the remainder of his life, including a stint coaching the women's team in the 1980s and later serving as an award-winning radio analyst, a position that allowed Lehman to endear himself to a whole new generation of UMass players, coaches, and fans. He was the former coach, and you're like, can you trust him? Is he for us? And the more we were around him, we're like, this guy, either he's fooling us or this is one of the great human beings I've ever come upon. He wants us to do well. Lehman passed away in 2004 at the age of 71. To this day, his name remains synonymous with UMass basketball. Jack Lehman was and remains posthumously, I think, the soul of UMass basketball. As someone who is regarded regionally and really nationally as a great, great coaching mind, uh, and someone whose loyalty to this basketball program extended for his entire life. I think there's only one Jack Lehman, and I think the people at the university were fortunate to have him there. And I hope that somewhere out there there's going to be another Jack Lehman that comes back to that university because 
Those guys are what made basketball go around, and he was very, very different and a very, very great man.